Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, during uh, the conference of Egypt Can uh, Conference for Textile, uh, the uh, industry of uh, textile, three Egyptian uh, experts uh, uh, spoke, were speakers uh, in this uh, conference uh, through the Zoom, Zoom uh, technology. And uh, among them is uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed Al Shafi, director of uh, Polymer and Color Chemistry Program, uh, Wilson College uh, of Textile USA. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Shafi. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Shafai. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, good, 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 good afternoon to you. I know there is a time difference. Yes. Uh, okay, Dr. Shafai, how does uh, the organic uh, agriculture uh, serve uh, the cotton uh, uh, cultivation? Um, I, can't, I couldn't hear your question clearly. Could you please, could you please repeat the question? Okay, I will repeat the question. How does organic agriculture serve cotton cultivation? Um, so, um, organic agriculture, I, I think what you mean is uh, um, um, uh, something that's free of uh, chemical treatment. Is, is that what your question is about? Hello, Dr. Shafi, can you hear me? I, 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 there is an echo in your voice. Yes, uh, please. Uh, in your voice, just, I can't, I can't, I, if you are sitting uh, before the uh, the television, kindly uh, switch off the volume. Only hear me through the phone, please. Could you? Okay. Yes. Go, go ahead, please. Yes. So, uh, I, my question is: How does the organic agriculture uh, serve cotton cultivation? Um, so, uh, organic agriculture, um, I think this, this is a, more of a question for people who are working on the area of um, agriculture, uh, but I will tell you more about um, cotton and how cotton can impact uh, textile industry. And my area of expertise is in uh, buying and finishing. So, um, if, we, uh, if we develop... Um, new crops of cotton based on um, uh, chemical free pipe treatments, I think that would be a good um, way of uh, invading or um, uh, getting into the, um, uh, the global market of cotton, and it will be a good point of sale uh, for Egyptian cottons. Um, there are other points that we need to consider in, in addition to um, uh, um, organic cotton, uh, which is uh, buying cotton and finishing cotton in a sustainable way. So uh, one of the ways that we can um, promote and um, in, in, you know, make more money uh, from cotton is to buy cotton in an environmentally friendly way. Um, and, and, and I would call that sustainable buying and finishing. Uh, by branding the Egyptian cotton that was dyed in a sustainable way, um, I think that would um, help also, you know, um, uh, you know, um, with the global, um, you know, um, you know, uh, invading, you know, of cotton into the global market, and would help, you know, the uh, Egyptian cotton, you know, make strides um, along the way. Um, also, we can um, focus on finishing cotton in a sustainable way, and that will help you also, you know, cotton. And we can develop cottons that water oil repellent, uh, flame retardant cottons, um, and we can also develop cottons that um, have multifunctional properties. So uh, all these can go along uh, very well with organic cotton. So, uh, Dr. Shafai, uh, what are the modern ways uh, in order to increase uh, the productivity uh, uh, while reducing uh, costs? Um, so, the, the reducing cost, that will come back to what I said earlier about sustainability. So, uh, there are uh, now uh, technologies that are available in the global market. 
um, of machineries for buying cotton in a sustainable way. So uh, we can buy cotton um, uh, with more than 95% saving in energy, more than 95% saving in water, and also um, uh, with zero discharge. And the technology that would help us achieve that is called foam buying. Um, and what it is basically, it's taking a bath and converting the bath into a foam and applying that foam into cotton. Uh, by, by doing that, we are able to save more than 95% in energy because the process itself takes, you know, takes about one minute. The total buying time takes about one minute. Um, and there is no um, drying required. There is no curing required during the process. So there is a significant um, saving in energy. And when it comes to water, um, there is, like I said, more than 95% saving in water because simply um, you don't use a dry bath. And the other great news about using that technology is that you also don't need to use um, uh, an after, um, after wash uh, treatment. Once the fabric is dried, you don't need to wash it. So we are talking about huge water saving. And because of that, you are going to have a zero discharge which is significant when we think about environmental aspect of the buying process. So that's with respect to buying. We can do a similar process for the finishing aspect uh, by converting the finish also to a foam using this type of machineries, which is foam buying, foam, foam, foam uh, uh, machineries, and we can apply the finish uh, on the fabric, and in fact, you can do one side with one finish and uh, the other side with a completely different uh, finish. So um, we are talking here about a versatile process while that you are saving yourself um, water, uh, energy, and have no environmental pollution. And that is a significant again, and we, for the textile industry in Egypt. Yes. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Shafi, uh, now uh, uh, we all know that uh, Egypt uh, for long, uh, uh, has a long history in, uh, uh, and uh, a great repetition concerning uh, the Egyptian uh, cotton. It is uh, the top uh, uh, in uh, all over the world. So uh, how can we uh, get benefit from this? Uh, and how can we uh, 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 um, 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 get back uh, the industrial base in uh, Mahalla? Um, uh, that is producing, of course, uh, cotton and textile in uh, uh, the governorate of uh, Mahalla here uh, uh, in Egypt. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So uh, I, I can hear mo your voice now more clearly. So uh, that's a great question. So the the, the way that we can get really um, uh, uh, Egyptian cotton to sell more worldwide. It requires really, you know, different mechanisms. So the, the, the first mechanism, I think, would be about branding and marketing. Um, so um, it, it, I, you will be surprised to hear this because sometimes when I go, we, go here and the U.S. to high-end um, retail stores, um, I see Egyptian cottons, you know, and people who are selling it, you know, like, for example, you know, pitches. And in some high-end stores, you will see, um, you know, um, bed sheets that sell for more than $1,000. And, and the reason for that is because it's made from Egyptian cotton. And you go to the, you know, the, the salesman, you know, or the saleswoman that in, in, in those high-end stores, and you saw why it's expensive, because they say it's Egyptian cotton. So people know the value of Egyptian cotton. Um, the, the, the thing is that we need to invade, you know, the market more and have more, mark, more you know, uh, marketing. And sometimes I see ads also on the TV, you know, saying, you know, that these 
you know, materials are made of Egyptian cotton. So we need to have more of that in order to, you know, um, make people know about uh, Egyptian cotton because uh, that if we look at how many people or the percentage of people in the U.S., for example, who know about Egyptian cotton, perhaps it's not where we, we know it should be. So we need to increase the marketing. We need to increase the branding. And uh, there should be teams working on that in Egypt. And in addition to that, um, I think the term sustainability is going to help. Um, and the, the term of organic cotton is going to help. So we need to use these um, buzzwords when we are trying to go into, you know, the global market whether it's U.S. or Western, um, you know, Western, uh, sort of was, you know, Western countries in general or other countries. So we need to use buzzwords about, uh, you know, Egyptian cotton like organic cotton. It was dyed in a, you know, in a sustainable way. It was dyed in a, uh, well, it was finished in a sustainable way because there is a big, you know, um, you know, move now towards sustainability. And in fact, there are companies now in the U.S., that mainly focus on sustainability, like Patagonia in California, for example. Um, so, and we're going to see this more and more as the world strives for, you know, um, more water resources, you know, and trying to save, you know, money and energy in uh, industry in general. So, I, I think we need to use more buzzwords about, you know, uh, Egyptian cotton, like I said and, you know, um, buy and finish the cotton in a more sustainable way. Dr. Ahmed al-Shafi, how do you see the Conference of Egypt can for industry as um, uh, a step to um, communicate between scholars uh, and uh, uh, exchange uh, um, a point of views between uh, uh, experts, Egyptian experts abroad and Egyptian experts uh, here in Egypt and scientists? Yeah, that's another great question. I think, um, you know, uh, and, and I think we, we need, we, I would like to take that, you know, the opportunity and, the, um, you know, of, of that uh, conference call to give credit, some of the credit, or to give credit to Ahmed Fay. I mean, he's, he's a great um, uh, individual and really, um, you know, um, a good figure uh, for somebody who is trying to promote and bring, um, um, a, 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 you know, um, Egyptian, you know, scientists abroad and make the connection between those scientists and the Egyptian government, you know, to uh, help with different industries. Um, I think it's a, 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 you know, a great mechanism to bring um, technologies, new technologies to uh, different uh, you know, industries in Egypt, and uh, I think we're going to see the benefit benefits of that in the next maybe um, three to five, five years. Uh, I think that the groundwork has been already done uh, by uh, Ahmed Fai, you know, a few years ago, and uh, now we are seeing the fruit of that uh, by making, you know, the connections between the scientists abroad and the Egyptian governments in different sectors. And I would also like to take that um, um, opportunity to thank the Excellency Dr. Nadila um, the Minister of Immigration, for uh, organizing the conference that happened just like a week ago, and also I, the other ministers that were at the meetings. So um, I think um, we, we're going to see the benefits of that because... Uh, Egyptians are rather willing and will be happy to help in any way they can uh, with different industries in Egypt. And so um, I, think, I think we are on the right track. And uh, like I said, we're going to see the fruit of that in the next meeting. Yes, uh, I thank you very much for your time and for your valuable information, uh, Dr. Ahmed Shafai, Director of the Polymer and Color Chemistry Program, Wilson College Textile USA, and one of the speakers in the Egypt Khan uh, uh, Conference for Industry of uh, Textile. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With this, we come to the end of this episode of our program, Cairo Local Time. I'm Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.